Welcome back to part two. Hope you didn't hear the offstage remark there uh, <laughs> from Jamie Hoyland, who was saying, just as the titles were rolling there, couldn't trap a bag of cement. We won't say who he was talking about there, but he could ah. be. He has been a guest on the show, the, the fellow that... And he uh, features prominently uh, for Sheffield United. He, well, he, he, and he could be and coming back. he's not back. the manager. No. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> and he could be coming back. Well, he, he was going to be coming back at some stage in the future weeks. But it's definitely not the man you think it is. No, it's not. It no. can't be. Thank no. you very much for that, Jamie. Anyway, I think you put yeah. the man off. <laughs> what, we, what we were talking about actually was, and he won't mind me mentioning it, <laughs> <laughs> was that uh, Keepy Uppy, which we're going to see here from the UK's street football manager here at Kieran Beach, we're going to see him demonstrating a bit of uh, ball control uh, shortly. Uh, it reminded me of, uh, I made a, an unfortunate stage appearance uh, at an event somewhere, I think it was in Rotherham. Alan Nill was there. James Shield, the Sheffield Stars sports writer, football Sheffield United writer, was there. And so was Les Payne, then Sheffield Star writer, mm -hmm. now now retired. And there was a, we all got roped in, and Alan Nill, and we all got roped into a keepy uppy competition on stage. Now I didn't finish last. I think I beat Les Payne actually. Well done. But. James Shield beat the professional Alan Nil, but Alan wasn't wearing the right footwear. That's oh, what he what that he told us. Footwear, this footwear is, is a, a big thing. Alan Nil. Listen, I played with Nilly at Berry. <laughs> yeah. Three were his record then, so <laughs> yeah. three. Yeah, they were his head. <laughs> oh, if I'd have just got one more then. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, James Gregg uh, joins us uh, with a, with a roundup. Um, we didn't really fully go into Dominic Calvert-Lewin because we were talking about the twin successes of the England under-20s. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin would have been, even though he played for Everton, for your team in the Premier League, would have been a new name to a lot of the watching audience there in that World Cup final. But, boy, did he showcase some of what he could do. There's a lot more there too, I believe. He did as well. And, and also, I mean, he, he got left out, I think, against um, was it Italy in the semi. Yeah. Uh, and I think that might have been a little kick up the backside he needed. He'd done well in it, and then he brought Paul brought him back for the final, left Armstrong out, and I thought he led the line superb. Mm. Um, and it's funny because we all said he should have, like I said before, he should have scored at first chance, mm. but he's done so well to like take it down and then have his shot and follow it in so cool. But he did a lot for Solanke as well. Solanke got a lot of plaudits about scoring the goals, but. Dom's work about occupying defenders and his physical presence, even though he's a, he's a slight lad, he's built, you know, he's all muscle there, and he knocks people about, and he, he's good in the air, and he helps other, other people. He does that really well. Good attitude, and, they say, really yeah, hard oh, work. brilliant attitude, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, he's just signed, I think he's just signed a new five-year contract, but right. that's not bothered him one bit. He's still same old Dom, smiley face yeah. all the time. But then again, I'd be smiling all the time. I'd just sign another five-year contract. <laughs> yeah. But he is. No, he is. He's great. He comes in and he's smiling. And we have a laugh and a joke about United, obviously, because he's a blade. And we're, we're delighted they've gone up. And we have that little thing going on. But he, but he hasn't changed one bit. He's, no. he's still the same. He, he wears his, like they do now, the dodgy gear and all yeah, like that well, sort of stuff. Yeah. Where me and Unzi give him stick about that. But, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I can do now. That, that's the youth of today. But they've got, but they've got youth to put, telling him that it's dodgy gear, haven't they? As oh, long as they don't think yeah. it's good, that's, that's Exactly. Fact. That's it. <laughs> yeah. They come in and he comes in our office still and Tom David and we still hammer him, same, you see. Yeah, but yeah. they, they yeah. like that. They've not, they've not changed. They've not changed one bit. And I've, it's one of them places, Everton, you're not allowed to. And from, the, from the car park attendant to, to uh, Emma who works behind the canteen, or, or they'll give it them. They're not bothered who they are, they give it them. That's fantastic, isn't it? I think it's a scout's I'm, mentality, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. It's so, a great and it's brilliant. Club. It's a great, like I say, it's a great environment. You know, there's no, yeah. there's no egos, none whatsoever. It's great in the same Chris Wilder at Sheffield. Mm, right? Yeah, that's, that's the right. thing. Yeah. It's similar, similar to that Sheffield mentality. Yeah. We don't like a show off, do we, no. really? And we don't no. like someone getting above the stage. I mean, Chris, come back down. talking <laughs> about. Show off. Yeah, talking about. But talking about Chris, he's Harry, isn't he? He's, yeah. he's Bassett, what I played. There were no egos there. Yeah. Yeah, Talking no. of show offs, anyway, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Kieran. This about guy, that. We're going to give you Back your show chair. off 20 seconds in a minute. It's a very, very good 20 seconds. But I was going to say about uh, Dominic uh, Calvert Lewin, 
And, you know, everybody in Sheffield, Bramall Lane, uh, Bramall Lane, all the manager of players and his former teammates and the fans will appreciate what he's done. But there'll be, and, the, and that's why I wrote a column on it this week, there'll be that thing of, oh, we should have kept him and played him. We, we you know, whoa, another one's gone that we could have... Hey. Well, and I'll be, I've spoke to Chris about this. I've seen him at a lot of games yeah. with me, mate. He were never going to play him. He right. was, it, it, Dom was still un, un, untried. So to get promotion out of this league, he wanted good League One players yes. who've done it. And that's why Cy Nansen, Billy Sharp's there, Leon yeah. Clark, these sort of people have done it to get him out of the league. Yeah. And, I, and I, it's funny, Gage, he'd put something on Facebook, you know, what is he worth now? And, yeah. you know, if we kept him, he wouldn't have been worth anything because, because he, he wouldn't, wouldn't have played. played. Yes. He's only gone up in sta yeah. stature because he's come to Everton, took his chance, been in the World Cup and suddenly... Is yeah. million millions now? You know what he yeah. what he's worth. You'd say at Sheffield United, we're still talking in hundred thousands because he'd been playing. He would have been playing in under twenty threes. Even if he yeah. had yeah. played, there's no way they were going to do better than get a hundred points. No, not a chance. Not a chance. He wouldn't have probably scored thirty goals. You know, the, 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 no, he wouldn't. That's the thing. He you've got to think of these things. And that's yeah. that's the thing. He, he, Chris were never going to gamble on youth players to get. He needed to get them out of this yeah. league. He needed the club to bond again, to get it going, yeah. because, it, I mean... Well, let's face it, Sheffield United sack managers when they don't get promotion. Exactly. So and, you've and, got to... And so that were his thing. And yeah. so he, he wanted proven first division players. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you can understand Paul it. Paul Kieran's were. family will tell you, because they're all season ticket, so, <laughs> yeah. season ticket holders, so they're delighted yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's worked out great. I know you'd presume, I mean, the figures go around, but you think it's it rising to about 1.4 million or so, yeah. something like that. You'd think there has to be a sell-on. I mean, sell-ons are very topical at the moment yeah. because of Harry Maguire's transfer to yeah. Leicester. 17 million, I think Sheffield United get 10% of profit yeah. that Hull yeah. make on yeah. that deal, which is considerable. Mm. If, I mean, heck, if Carl Walker goes to Manchester City for 40 million from Tottenham, you're talking 4 million or something yeah, yeah. on that. So you'd think there, there'll be a sell-on on Calvert-Lewin. If yeah, ever we're not sell. selling it. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. I'll I'll you that. That. I'll, we're not selling him. He's going nowhere. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure we will. And, and that's great business with the other two as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. they've, they've yeah. gone on and had great careers. Uh, you know, Cal Carl Walker. Walker. Brilliant. Fan, done brilliant. Harry Maguire, they sold him when they were in first division. Yeah. So he was never going to be worth 17 million no. then. But he's gone on and even after a relegation. He's, he's done great, Harry. What you want is both the Sheffield clubs in the Premier League oh. and then there won't be the same pressure. The players that come through, they can use keep or be one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah those were yeah, yeah. the great days again. Those were the days. The early 90s, would be, yeah. They can happen again. I can sense mm. the, 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 there's momentum. It mm. can yeah, happen yeah. again. Yeah. Right, uh, Kieran, we're going to embarrass... No, we're not going to embarrass oh, you. No. <laughs> you. You are going to embarrass us in a minute. When we show that, though, that his, his amazing ball skills. Absolutely, uh, yeah. I'm glad to say he hasn't brought a ball in with him tonight, otherwise we'd have had something to go. <laughs> what else know, is going absolutely, on? Absolutely, yeah. Of course, we've already touched on Dom Calvert-Lewin there. Um, scoring the winner in the World Cup final sounds good, that, doesn't it? And David, oh, David Brooks as well and George Hurst, they played in the Toulon tournament, also England under-20s. They won that. Uh, George Hurst was uh, joint top scorer. David Brooks was named player of the tournament, so pretty good really from all the sort of academy graduates um, around this area as well. That's in recent weeks, because of course we've not been on for the last couple of weeks. Bring you some more sports news as well. Uh, Sheffield, uh, Sheffield Kickboxing Club, six of them returned home with seven medals from the World Kickboxing Championships in Athens. 800 fighters from 30 different nations, um, and they were Jake Russell, Nathan Riddle, Matt Griffin, Nikolai uh, Piragan. Tony Crooks, Blaine Armitage and Mike Brunt. Well done to you chaps as well, because that's serious and perhaps don't get the plaudits that you deserve right at the top of your game. Uh, Sheffield Eagles are playing against Batley Bulldogs on Sunday after this trouncing last weekend yeah. um, at home to Halifax. They brought in a couple of players as well, have the Eagles on loan as well. So hopefully that, that can sort of bolster their fortunes. They are sixth in the table in the championship, so... A good end Pretty to the good. season could see them finish in the top four and, of course, in that middle eight yeah. between Super League and the Championship as well. And if you do go to watch, it's actually free of charge on Sunday at Batley in honour of murdered MP Joe Cox a year on from that. So that's something good uh, to go and get your eyes round on uh, Father's Day on Sunday. And, of course, talking of Father's Day, you can take your dad to the dogs at Ollerton Stadium um, on Sunday. Yeah, I know. 
Just thank me later if you have forgotten it was Father's Day. I'm not sure if that's something that appeals to you. Would you want to go to the dogs on Sunday, Alan? I went to the dogs years ago. <laughs> you can see that, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Well, it's uh, 12.30pm. There's 12 races um, on Sunday afternoon. Yes, um, it would appeal to me. I've been to a dog night two yeah, or three good. times. A fantastic night. So good Everybody has great fun. You don't have to know anything about greyhound racing at all. It's a fun evening. You pick one I really on it from watching yeah. it around. Yeah, we've exactly. had John in from Oderton Stadium. We have, yeah, only a few times. A few times. Exactly, and, uh, yeah. And also yeah. Um, something that you may be tuning to watch after this program finishes, of course, not now. Stay here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the U.S. Open golf starts and two Sheffields in action. Matt Fitzpatrick. He was in a rich vein of form, actually. He's had a couple of uh, good top ten finishes, second in his last start in Sweden. Um, he tees off at about ten past eight our time, so right after this programme finishes, you can get stuck <laughs> into over. that. And, of course, Danny Willett as well in the group after that. So, um, yeah, good luck to those two in the US Open at Erin Hills this week. Excellent. Just a couple of other things. Mm. Um, the annual charity game that you might even have played in at some time, Reds v Blues. I have, have you no played in that? to play, actually, this weekend, but I'm yeah. going on holiday. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good, good excuse. Right, yeah. OK. Where are you going? Uh, <laughs> North Norfolk, Ply. Nice that's, area. That's I go every year, take the dogs down to the beach. Beautiful. That's yeah. commutable. Honestly, this is a coincidence. I'm going to a friend's birthday party in Norwich on Saturday. Well, pop night. in. Yeah. Pop in. I'll come and see honestly, you on uh, North Norfolk. Yeah. We, could share, we could share a car going down Right next to Windmill. <laughs> I'm, yeah, not sure right could, I'm not sure you could share a car with I'm going to say I'm staying down <laughs> yeah, for the week. Oh, oh, well, I'm not, unfortunately. No. Uh, <laughs> right, Reds v Blues, uh, annual charity game, raises money for good, good causes and is always great entertainment because it's a whole day of events and it's at uh, Hillsborough Arena this coming Saturday. X Blades and X Owls players on each side. I think the kick-off the main game there is three o'clock, but there's lots going on before then. And also to mention Uden Trophy, which is something that James and I uh, are involved in. You mm -hmm. more than me, actually, because I'm usually on holiday yeah. uh, in July. But, um, you know, it's a groundbreaking international youth tournament that preserves Sheffield's uh, unique football heritage, recreating mm. the first ever cup competition. And it takes place annually and a lot to look forward to, record number of teams involved this year. And you can help support this uh, and project it into the future uh, by, by backing it, actually. Uh, and I'll give you uh, an email address. It's, it's well worth chipping in here um, to keep this going well into the future, make it an annual event. It's a Just Giving page, justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Uden. That's justgiving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Uden. It's a and great it's tournament. Great I will tournament. say that it's, um, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger, actually. I remember it's the, the, the third one since it's restarted this year. Since it started, uh, yeah, yes. And it's, it's, um, it's fantastic. Uh, showcasing some of the best players, under 16s and under 14s they have. And last year, <coughs> Dembele, Dembele, the, the yeah. young chap yeah, from, from Celtic, yeah. who's all over the national press, he played, and wow, mightily impressive, can get up really, you know, on a park pitch, basically. Yes. And watching these really high quality players play, brilliant. So yeah, do get yourself involved in that, it's brilliant. And it provides something that's missing from a lot of young, developing young players, which is proper competition, you know, a proper yeah. competition, yeah, yeah. football. Right, you're going to be involved in a competition, uh, but first of all, uh, hey, I'll just, just have a look at this, have a look at this. Is that something you can teach us then? I can teach it, you some basics. Of there's it. like nine minutes left of the program. Not in nine minutes. No. <laughs> hey, we I'm, I'm two years in and still learning. So. <laughs> I'm going to bring Alan Nill in next time you're on. So you, can, you, you and he can work together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you make that look very easy, of course, but, I mean, years of practice. A couple of years of freestyling. Uh, I've been in, involved in street couple football for four years and then freestyle football, which the buffs. Similar kind of sports, but they've got their own separate yeah. identity. Uh, I've been involved in that for two years after being recommended by someone you know, uh, John Farnworth, who also works on like Match of the Day, uh, CBB's yeah. Match of the Day. He pushed me to go and try freestyle football, yeah. But, um, 
how, do, how do you, you know, how do you practice something like that? Because for me, I know that I pick up a ball, I'd have a couple of goes, and I'd be rubbish, and then I'd a lot of determination, so a lot of determination. It is, it is. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, it's quite a, a difficult. I was never skillful as a player when I was younger. I would never get into any junior teams. I was small. I'm still quite small now. Um, but it is. A, it's a lot of practice. Just being willing to try and fail. You've got to be willing to make mistakes. Fall. I've fallen so many times while yeah. I've been in my garden. Like that. Not a nice place to fall on the concrete, but it does happen. But it's about getting back up and just going and, yeah. and trying how, to improve. How can people get involved then in what you do? There's um, many pathways these days. Are, are where I learnt a lot of the skills through YouTube. Um, YouTube's a brilliant pathway now that anyone can find anything. That yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can learn whatever you want on YouTube. So there's a lot of good channels on YouTube where you can go out and learn. Um, there are. A, it's just going and experimenting with a ball and being prepared to try and yeah. be a bit different and, and not be scared to make the mistakes oh, yeah. and just go with it, just go with the flow sometimes and mm. have a bit of fun with it. So, How confident are you of uh, the, U the UK's prospects then in these European Championships then? Could you be a, a football, you know, the, the first football manager to win the, the Euros from it, England? It would be England. an honour, it would be a, we'll be going to win, we don't go to, to lose but we're facing very stiff competition, we're especially with the Dutch, who are the, sort of the founding fathers of street football as it's played these days. And the, the Danish crew have got a very good, talented team. They finished in the World Street Finals last year. The, the, both those two played each other in the finals. Dutch, the, the Danish actually won the Dutch in a group stage to win the group, but the right. Dutch won the final in the end. Um, yeah, there's some very good teams going there. Germany's got a good rise in senior street football, and uh, Poland, who's also in, we've got probably the toughest group to get out. We're in the 4v4s, it's going to be quite yeah. difficult. Uh, one of our players in the 1v1s, Jack Downer, is seeded, and, and he's very experienced. He's, he's experienced in the 1v1 competition. So we've got some good, young, experienced players already who've competed at, at the higher echelons in this sport. But for us, it's about trying to make the connections and, and get the experience of working with and playing and spending time with yeah. some of the better, better street players so we can Is there a way that, that professional clubs maybe should incorporate this in their, in their, their training routines and schedules, particularly uh, yeah. for, for younger players? Yeah. I'm could, could, they, could they, should they do that, this kind of Yeah, I mean, there, is, there is schools, coaches, isn't yeah. there, but yeah. not not anything like that. No. Not not anything. I mean, you wouldn't yeah. need to do that in a game. No, but, or, it, no. it, but it's one of those. It's it, if you can master a ball at an early age, keeping it up, hmm. you know, you can master a football. And and so oh, you so know, right. it's a it's a th yeah. it's a thing. What a lot of kids don't do. They no. they move on to the next step before they can even master it. And it's amazing going into coaching and saying, right, we're going to do the warm up of just keeping a ball up, both feet for. And you've got pros and balls going all over the place, and you're looking round. So for for these guys to yeah to, to do that, I mean you don't want your centre half doing flicks and no. catching on his neck and trying to run out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not. that's not a good thing, Alf. You know what I mean? Yeah. But for for the for the players in the in the attacking third to have something like that up the sleeve and, and yeah. doing stuff and moving, as we saw, as we keep going about Pogba with Kale. Yes. That's what, and also it's, it's exciting it because is. wingers have gone out of the game now, so we don't see that anymore. Not so we're looking for one v ones all the time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I look at that and it's just breathtaking when you when you see that some is. of the skills they do. It's fantastic. Yeah. These players like Messi, they they seem to have the sort of the ball glued to the foot, and I'm assuming that something like that probably helps cultivate that kind of that, that kind of style, doesn't it? Yeah, you know? certainly. Like Neymar and, and uh, Ronaldinho was a big incorporate of street yeah. football into the game. Mm. So one of the famous moves, the Elastico, is actually what we call an acker in right. street football, okay. which is a quick change of direction with the ball. Uh, he made that f skill famous, but yeah. it, it was used on the courts for years before it became but, a famous But looking at that, thing. Uh, I mean, Kieran's mentioned them names there as well. Yeah. You look where they were brought up. Correct. They yeah. weren't being brought up on 4G AstroTurf. No. No. They no. were being brought up on the streets. Yeah, it yeah. is. Brazil and Argentina. Yeah. Going, yes. Go on, there's well, got 30 lads all trying to get the ball. Might not even be a proper ball. No. Yeah. So go on then. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And Messi's that big, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and he's having to do that and use that. So. That is the real concept of street football. There you go. Yeah. Ronald, Ronaldinho yeah, yeah. as well. You know that you, you know that, that mm. move that you mentioned. A couple of flicks mm. of the foot and it was round. You just yeah. 
Absolutely. I'd be Claremont with that. That'd be another <laughs> knee gone. That'd be, I'd be on my ninth knee operation if I tried to do that. <laughs> ninth knee operation. <laughs> By the way, uh, Keith Edwards, old mate of yeah. yours, uh, successfully had a hip operation again recently, and uh, he's well. He's, he's, he's right, really very well. A uh, friend of the programme has been in a couple Is it? of times. Because he was, he was struggling uh, a lot. Under sufferance a bit with those steps, you know, coming right. karate. Well, Alan uh, Kelly, who was my brother in law, has had yeah. a knee replacement this week. Has he? Yeah. It's so a lot of it about, isn't there? There is a lot of it about. I think that yeah. playing on Preston's uh, artificial when it was yes. as hard as a floor, I think Alan suffered that. So, But he's going on all right. Is he good? good great go great goalkeeper for Sheffield United. Terrific. Absolutely great. He were all right, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your dad, you were saying something about that. Um, Jamie's dad, Tommy, played for United, what, in the 50s? Yeah. Are we talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, 50s, late 40s, yeah. 50s, 14 years. And he's 85. He's 85 yeah. this week. And you reckon, or he reckons, he's well, the oldest he's, surviving player. I think he's, one, I think he's player. yeah, I think so. I think Fred, Freddie Furness, uh, God rest his soul, he, he passed away recently. And I think he was one of the oldest. I think my dad's he's one of the oldest The oldest now, surviving so, now. Uh, the yeah. club are inviting him down uh, to one of the first matches, him and my mum. She's still going strong as well. He's great. just beating her. She's 84, Connie. But yeah. they're, uh, they're brilliant. They're great. When I come out, it's great to do this. So I come over and see them, and my mum does me meat, yeah. and my oh. sandwiches, and everything. You know, like well, they do. Uh, so. yeah. Yeah, there, there's me thinking, oh, it's asking a lot for Jamie to come over from Lan Lancashire and all Lancashire. the rest of it. And, yeah. Yeah. But of course, with the, fa with the family. Where? So you come over to see the family and just drop in here. It works perfectly. It works perfectly, it works. Alan, any time. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant, yeah. So you're, you're off on holiday shortly. Uh, I mean, you're going to, to Norfolk, I'm going to Norwich. You're going to Denmark on, on June the 28th. Yeah, we fly on the 28th, and yeah. And yeah. the competition runs on the 29th, is it 30th. Is it on first. TV? Yeah. It was streamed, yeah, it was streamed. I imagine it'll be streamed. Yeah. It's a very big competition. It's not just, obviously, street football and freestyle football. The whole competition's got a lot of different sports running, so yeah. there's going to be a lot of participants from different sports. There's parkour going to going on as well so wow, it's yeah. a big 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 yeah. event that happens i think it happens every year or every couple of years over in in denmark uh, and travels around the scandinavian countries is it like an indie kind of feel to it as well is that is that the street football's vibe? street football's still got quite a big underground scene yeah it is still underground as such but now we're trying to create competition so we can sort of bring the young players the chances to to push themselves and mm. go into it it's a different route for mm. A lot of ex-pros have gone on to become freestyle footballers mm. or yeah. people yeah, that have yeah. gone into academies. So there's different avenues now for people mm. to approach, as well as futsal we was talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's very underground. And part of us want to keep it underground, like skating as such, but yeah. we want to also bring it to the public a bit more so they can get a feel for the sport and uh, yeah, enjoy so it. So it's yeah. very exciting. Now, just briefly, in the final minute, how are Everton going to do next season, do you think? Um, well, for Europa League, and yeah. looks like there's a few signings coming in this week. Really? Uh, Anybody you can tell us about? Uh, uh, well, Pickford, Pickford signed. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's the first. You're looking at others from. Uh, well, I'm I'm talking about first team now. I think uh, there's the lad from Ajax. I think there's talk of Clarsen coming in. Right. Um, I think a centre f centre forward. I don't know what's going on with him. Sandro, that's been on the press. And there might be a centre half as well, so right. there's a bit of money. There are new grounds coming as well on the docks, so it's all it's progressive right. and positive at the Sheffield moment. Sheffield United will be okay in the Championship, will they? I think for so. a season, and then we'll be, and then then be in the Premier League, which would be great. <laughs> Brilliant yes. answers, Jamie. Thanks so much, Kieran. Pleasure to meet you. Thanks Terrific, so James as well. On my YouTube later. See you next week. Bye bye. Good night.